Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm Cliff Greenberg. I've been in the investment management business for almost 40 years now. For the last 25 years, I've been here at Barron Capital. I started and, managed, and have managed the Barron Small Cap Fund since its founding in September of 1997. And in 2020, became co-CIO with my pal, Andrew Peck. <laughs> Great. Great. Thanks, Cliff. Hopefully, I'm a familiar face to many of you. I joined the firm as a summer research analyst back in 1997, which means I'm celebrating my quarter century anniversary at the firm today. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I started my career as a research analyst and became a portfolio manager at Barron Asset Fund about 20 years ago, and I've been the co-CIO with Cliff since 2020. As CIOs, Andrew and I ensure that our portfolio managers are applying our Barron investment process consistently across all our portfolios. We also serve as sounding boards and mentors, sharing our experience and perspective, trying to help our managers think through their portfolios and make the best possible decisions. So, our strategy is pretty simple. We are long-term investors in high-quality, special growth companies. The premise is basic. However, the execution is an art. We have a, dif a differentiated process that we've honed over the years. We believe it's repeatable and applicable to all our funds. Let me briefly explain. First, we identify great companies through our own fundamental bottoms-up research performed by the portfolio managers and the research analysts together. We make significant investments in the businesses that meet our criteria as we develop strong conviction. We hold on to those stocks as they grow and prosper as, and, and do as we envision. We seek to hold them for many, many years. And if we were to lose conviction, or the stocks just rise to too high a price, we sell that stock and replace it with another investment that we believe in more. Though we, may, though we own many, many stocks at Barron across all our portfolios, they share common characteristics and principles. Our research process is based on three key principles. We're long-term investors in secular growth businesses with durable competitive advantages run by great management teams. Now that's a bit of a mouthful, so let's try to break down what this means. Secular growth. Well, growth is pretty straightforward. Growth businesses can rapidly grow their revenues and profits to hopefully become much larger over time. Secular growth businesses are a subset of businesses that benefit from long-lasting shifts in their industry, which provide a tailwind for future growth. An obvious example would be Tesla, a huge beneficiary of the secular shift away from internal combustion to electric engines. Now, this shift is almost guaranteed as governments around the world have committed to banning the production of gasoline-powered cars. Competitive advantages. Competitively advantaged companies do things that most cannot. They provide some sort of product or service that can't be easily copied, often no matter how much money others choose to spend. A great example would be Vail Resorts. Vail owns irreplaceable mountain assets like Vail, Whistler, Park City, and many others. And we know Mother Nature is not making any more mountains. Great management teams. You've all heard our slogan, we invest in people, not buildings. We don't pick stocks by just looking at spreadsheets or financial statements. Instead, we meet extensively with the people managing our investments, and we try to assess whether they'll be good stewards of our investors' capital. We ask whether they're smart, visionary, hardworking, of good character, and if they have significant skin in the game. This morning, you met a small sampling of the impressive executives we invest alongside, and there are many others. So how do we identify companies that meet these characteristics? Well, we have a deep, experienced, and talented research team. 17 portfolio managers, 24 sector analysts, 
a director of research and a director of ESG research. It's a, C, a team that we have assembled and nurtured for over 25 years. It's a real great group of smart, hardworking, and nice people. I feel very lucky and privileged to work with them. Amy Chasen, our director of research, who's fabulous, you'll love her, is going to introduce the team and product lineup in a little more depth in a few minutes. A key part of our research effort is meeting with companies that we are investing in or considering investing in to really get to know the management teams and to understand the businesses inside and out, its past, its present, and its future. These meetings are attended by a wide swath of our research group. The collaboration and multiple perspectives are important inputs to our investment decisions. Also, we visit companies at their headquarters, which is invaluable. We attend industry events, visit competitors, and speak with experts, all to understand the full landscape of the investment decision. We use this independent due diligence as the core of our extensive analysis. We, di we digest key investment merits and KPIs. We run long-term models. We develop price targets to gauge potential returns. And we maintain all of this info in a proprietary database we call Brains, which is constantly updated and referred to to track our investments. In a few minutes, we're going to queue up a video with members of our investment team who will explain the investment process in a little more depth and from their vantage points. And to emphasize, all of our research is done with a long-term perspective. Andrew, fill us in on what that means. Sure. So what is a long-term investor? Being a long-term investor means thinking about our, inv our investments as businesses that we own, not as stocks that we rent for a short time. Long-term investing does not mean that we're trying to outguess every market pundit about where interest rates, inflation, energy prices, and the overall economy are headed. History shows that most of them are wrong anyway. Instead, we're laser focused on each company's business fundamentals. We try to know more than anyone else about our businesses, the fundamental drivers of their revenues and profits, their industry dynamics, and any competitive challenges they may face. It's this knowledge that affords us the confidence to hold stocks for very long periods. We think this long-term approach has served our investors well. Across our funds, there are many long-term holdings that have been very big winners for our investors. On the screen now is a list of 25 stocks that we've made 10 times or more our investment in that, in that company over the years, which is pretty cool. This slide show, sums up uh, those investments. We've held the stocks on average 16 years. They've compounded annual, annually at 25%. We've made $17.5 billion for us all in those investments, and they've equated to about half of gains. So long-term investing, when done very well, really has its merits. And we really are long-term. As you can see, our turnover is about one quarter of that of other funds, which means that in our Heritage Barron funds, we own stocks on average six years, which compares to about a year and a half for other funds. So how are we managing our funds and our investment process during this period of great volatility and the market's extreme short-term focus? Well. We've lived through these tumultuous markets before. I bet many of you were here at the Barron Conference in, two th in the fall of 2008, 14 years ago, during the great financial crisis. That morning, they couldn't even open the stock market on time because of all the heavy selling. I actually came out to present that day with a shield and a helmet on, mocking the little, or seen from the little rascals as I thought I was going to get pelted by my investors for the returns that we were having at that moment. Well, we survived. Right. Not only did we survive, it's important to remember that the market's up nearly 400% since that time. And as was the case back in 2008, 
every day we're being inundated with negative headlines. Inflation, interest rates, recession, war, trade disputes, election uncertainty, etc. Nevertheless, our primary focus remains sticking to our underlying process and trying to understand whether our company's long-term opportunities remain intact. We profess to have no strong view on the near-term course of the economy or the market. But we have a very deep belief in the future success of our companies, which ultimately drives the performance of stocks. As the market shifts its perspective from near-term challenges to long-term opportunities, we believe that our stocks can rise multiple fold in line with the much higher profits that we project into the future. So we are very optimistic about the long-term returns we believe that we'll be able to generate on a go-forward basis. Thank you all very much.